we've been going through a series, uh, Follow Me, and I thought the first uh, Sunday uh, that I'm speaking a full message, lead pastor, I wanted to focus on something that's going to be instrumental to us as a church, that's going to be something that, uh, that I want to be part of the heartbeat of who we are, and I not only believe that, that I want it, I think it also falls in line with the desire that the Father has for us, that we would be a people who believe the impossible is possible. And so this is a, this is a, a value, it, 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 you know, so something that uh, we want to build a church on. This is the foundation that, that I want to be true of us, that, that I think God wants to be true of us. As we've introduced this before as a church, and it's going to be something that we're going to continue to emphasize. Because I believe with all my heart that God can do the impossible. Amen. You guys believe that with me? Amen. As a church, if you don't believe that with me, I pray that you would grow in it. That you would grow to believe that God can do the impossible. Yes. Nothing, nothing, yes. nothing, nothing, nothing. Absolutely no idea that you had no problem. Nothing is impossible for God. Right. I mean, something that we can do that as kids, church. They'd be like, yeah! You know, no, as adults too, we'd be like, yes! Yes, I believe it! I don't know if I want to say anything this morning that is going to be new to you, but what I want to say this morning, I believe, is going to encourage you. It's going to strengthen us. And, and again, it's going to be a catapult. It's going to be, it's going to be a foundation. It's going to be a mark of us as children of God as we continue to walk out in faithfulness, what He's called us to do. It's going to be a mark that we're going to be a people who believe the impossible is possible. Why is this such an important thing? Why, Andrew, would you emphasize this on the first thing? Why? Because not only, I, I don't know about you, and, and I can think about this about my neighbors, or I can think about this for other people, and I'm like, yeah, they need somebody to believe with them. They need somebody to believe in the impossible is possible. And, you know, I've seen their lives are like messed up. But you know what? I need this. And, and if, I, if I'm really honest, you need this. You need to believe that the impossible is possible with God. And when we get this deep inside of us, I believe that we want to walk it out. And then we get to, and when we start believing this, then we start walking in this. And then we start seeing God do the impossible things. You guys know I love to summarize, you know, New Testament awesome stories of Jesus. But that's kind of what I have written down here again. And I loved, we, we sang a song this morning uh, uh, briefly about the, the children walking through the uh, Red Sea. Uh, you know, they, it, it, the song was about, I'm no longer a slave of God. It talked about, you know, uh, that they, they walked through the part of the sea. I, I wrote that down this morning as an example. Of God doing the impossible thing. I said, go die. You know, I was worshiping. I'm like, yes. God. This is, this, is, this is a story, guys. This is a story. I know you've heard me say, we knew these before. You know, I know many of you in this room are, are familiar with them. But you know, Jesus, he raised dead things to life. Yes. Like, like Lazarus was dead in the grave. And everybody thought it was too late. And he rose the he rose Lazarus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. If everybody smiled this morning, that's a good thing. Because like you got this, right? Right? Like like Jesus. And this morning I was talking with Denver and I, I called him in the office and said, hey Denver, well you know, what are some impossible things that Jesus has done? And he's like, man, Jesus walked on water. Yeah. And he said, but you know, I can walk on water too because it's frozen. I said, look, the, the water wasn't frozen when Jesus was walking on the water. This wasn't, it wasn't Jesus in the Midwest in, winter, in the dead of winter. No, this was Jesus on the Sea of Galilee. The storms were raging and it was crazy. And the disciples, they were on the boat. And Jesus literally walked on water. He defined physics. Like he, this is what Jesus did, right? And Jesus, man, he, he was, there's a crowd of people, and they were hungry, and the disciples said, we've got to feed all these people, let us send them away so they can get some food, and Jesus turns to them and like, what do you have to feed them with? They're like, all we got is a couple fish and a couple loaves, and he fed a multitude of people. Like, Jesus does the impossible, Right? You know, the taxes, they were like wondering, all right, should we pay taxes? Should we, should we not pay taxes? And Jesus answers them. He says, hey, whose who's, uh, who's picture is on the coin, right? And they're like, hey, it's Caesar's. They're all right, we should pay some taxes. Go and get a fish. And when you got the fish, 
fish, and what was in the fishes? A gold coin was in their fish's mouth, and they had enough to pay what was necessary. I'm going on. I'm, there's more. <laughs> right? Jesus, he healed the blind. Sometimes he spat on the ground and wiped it in their eyes. Sometimes he just spoke a word. Sometimes he touched them. And there were sick people. There were people with leprosy. There was lame people. People couldn't walk. I mean, Jesus was in the business of healing things. Man, I like that story of, uh, uh, of Brandon and his wife and the lung and the cancer and the pregnancy and, and full health and no more camp. Jesus is in the business of yeah, healing people. That's right. There's nothing that's impossible for him. And, and this is just the New Testament. This is just like briefly going through the New Testament. I think about the Old Testament, right? I mean, the Israelites being chased by their enemy, the Egyptians on their tails. They're, they're right in front of the Red Sea, right? And Moses, by faith, he steps out and boom! The Red Sea is split in half, and all of them, they walk through on dry ground. And then, if that wasn't enough, then the enemies are on their tail. They're coming across. They're going to catch up with them, right? Million of people crossing over the, the dry bed. And then the waters just crash down and destroy the enemy. Woo! God does the impossible. God, before time existed, before space, before matter, he was there. And all of a sudden, by a word from his mouth, spoke. And when he spoke, all of a sudden, all of creation, all matter, all time, all life, all things, all creatures, all creation, all plants, every the human being that he formed out of dust and he breathed into it life, he does the impossible, right? The enemy, man, Israel, going to go, and, G and God makes a promise to them that they're going to possess the land, and they're going to own the land, right? And they're going to this land, and it's full of enemies. It's full of people that can defeat them, and they get to Jericho, this crazy city with this huge wall, impenetrable. They, they, they take pride in the fact that, they, that nobody can come against them. And all they do, guys, they walk around the wall praising God, and they all of a sudden they shout, and it falls down. God does the impossible, right? Abraham and Sarah, that's promised to them that they're going to be a great nation. They're going to, man, and, and all of their habits are going to spread throughout the land, and they're going to be a blessing to everybody. And Abraham and Sarah, they're old. They can't have children. And even, it even says that Sarah, that she would laugh at the fact that God would promise them a child, and God even sent reminders to them, instead of people to them, to, to remind them of the promise. And she laughed again. Born of them a son. Blessed all nations, because the seed of Jesus runs all the way through the seed of Abraham. And we talk about crazy things like, like Elijah and all these wow, crazy stories of the prophets. I talk about the axe head floating in the water or some of you guys, I don't know if you guys know all these stories. Like, I mean, we we'll, we'll start going through impossible stories in the Old Testament too. And Jesus going over to the old widow's house and all of a sudden she's not having anything left but a little bit of, a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And all of a sudden it's multiplied and it multiplied and she continues to, to have what she needs. I mean, God is the God of the impossible. You guys know my favorite verse because I, I tend to quote this quite often, but Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, I want to remind you how Paul prayed. To the, the, this is the faith, this is the belief that Paul had, and I believe it's the truth about who God is. He says this in his prayer in Ephesians 3. He says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly, above and beyond all that I can ask or think, Amen. That's the kind of value, that's the kind of belief, that's the kind of faith I believe that when we stand on as a church and in our personal lives, then we will see God begin to do the impossible. This morning I wanted to propose to us two requirements for us to see the impossible. Two values that we need to hold dear 
to our heart, dear to us, that we need to practice, that we need to make part of who we are. Two things that we can do to continue to see and begin to see and always see God's, impossible, uh, God's possibilities within our impossible situations. And the first thing that we need to do as people, if we want to see God do the impossible things, I believe one is that we have to be a people of faith. It is required for us to believe. It is required for us to have faith. In, in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, if you guys have time this week, I want to encourage you, this is your homework. I can give you a homework assignment, this is your homework. Go home and read Hebrews chapter 10. And Hebrews chapter 10 it is story after story of people who put their faith in God, and then all of a sudden, he comes through for them. By faith, and this person did this, by faith, blah, blah, blah. And, and as we also adopt this belief, that God can do the impossible, we begin to see Him come through. In Hebrews chapter 11, after, after Hebrews chapter 10, there's all these faith movement happen. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. What is faith? Right? If it requires faith to see the impossible happen, what is faith? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. Faith is the assurance, or the substance, assurance of the things hoped for, the conviction, the evidence, the conviction of things not seen. Assurance. It says this in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34, that they, they, they knew better. They knew the better promise was, and so they had faith. Assurance or knowledge. They knew the better. I, wanna, uh, I want to introduce to you guys something that I also say often. What is the better that we know? We know who God is and what He has done. They, the, the people in chapter 10 that was recorded, they were able to do these feats of faith. They were able to see God do the impossible. They were able to put their faith in God because they knew who He was and they knew what He has done. By knowing, their knowing, their knowledge of what he's done, their, their knowledge of who he was, man, it, it fed their faith, and it produced radical examples of faith living. In order for us to see God do the impossible, sometimes it's going to require us to, to be reminded, or to know, or to remind ourselves, to read the word, to hear others praise God, to hear him exalted in our lives, to hear Him magnified in our life, because it is through the knowledge of who He is, and His knowledge of His revelation, that we put our faith in. God, if you have done this before, if you have been this before, if you are this, then I can walk this out in faith. We have to be a people of faith. Faith. My prayer is that we would move into faith, believing that we will see what God has done, that we can see the same way that the, the Bible reveals His works and His, His uh, acts, we can put our faith in that, that He will do more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think. We need to choose, this is what it comes to, we need to choose to believe the impossible is possible. We need to choose to put our faith in who God has revealed Himself to be. In the face of obstacles. And then I, mean, I, I say this, right? Andrew, Andrew, you're saying this. It sounds really easy. Just put my faith in Jesus. I'm saying, yes, put your faith in who He is and what is revealed. Who He is, what is revealed. By what He's done. Over and over and over again. You know, Andrew, that's not Andrew, you're making it too easy. I, I, I want to say, I, I want to say this with all graciousness, it's that easy. Amen. If we want to see the impossible things of God, it is that easy in choosing to believe, God, you have said this, so I'm going to do this. You've said this, so I'm going to walk this out. Andrew, but this is, I faced this thing. I, I got this thing going on. Uh, man, this obstacle is in my way. I, I, I want to again convince you it is thus easy as seeing what God has said, seeing what God has done, and walking it out Amen. in full obedience. Amen. We have to be people of faith. 
If we want to see the impossible made possible, we have to be people, I can say this, we have to be people of obedience, that choose to do what he has asked us to do, choose to do it his way, above and beyond anything that we can see in our midst, in order to see the impossible possible. We have to be first people of faith. Your way, God, what you want. Yes, God. I'll do it. Yes, God, you said it. I'll do it. Yes, God, I've seen you do it. God, I want to believe it. Be people who, uh, who see the impossible become possible. The second thing that is required of us, one is faith. Second, we must be people of prayer. People of prayer. Prayer is a place where we exchange our efforts and abilities for God's. Prayer is an act of humility, confessing our need for God's ability. But Andrew, you told me, you, you, you just told me before, I gotta be a person of faith, I gotta deny my, I gotta deny what's in front of me, I gotta deny the obstacle, I gotta believe on Jesus. Yep. And, and Andrew, now you're telling me I gotta be a person of prayer. If I wanna see the impossible, I gotta be humble, I gotta admit my need. I, yes. If we are to get all that God has for us, right? His, his, he, God is the one, right, who resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, right? If we are going to be people that see the impossible made possible, we have to say, uh, we have to be willing to say, God, I need you. That's right. I need you. This is true in troubled times. This is true when we're facing big, difficult things. This is, this is true when we're like, okay, this is impossible. This is like cancer. This is like uh, bills need to be paid. This is like, uh, all, all of a sudden, all these things are due and I didn't know about it. This is true when relationships break down. This is true when, when finances aren't able. This, this is true when we get a, a, a bad note from the doctor. This is true in those troubled times, but it's also true when we're walking out obedience and faith. This is true in our everyday life. We have to be people of prayer. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 through 16, it says this. This is why we can do this. It says this. Jesus, he understands every weakness of ours. Hebrews chapter 4, 15 through 16. Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. He did not succumb to the pressure. He did not succumb to the words outside of what God said. He did not succumb to the things that are surrounding us, the troubles that we have. He didn't succumb. He didn't sin. He remained in faith. And this is what it says. Let's continue this because it brings some encouragement to us. It says this. So whenever we are in need, we should come bravely. Some others say boldly before the throne of our merciful God. There we will, be able, we will be treated with undeserved kindness and we will find help. How can, we, how can I say, Andrew, we're going to be a people that believe the impossible is possible? We're going to be people that see the impossible being possible? Because I know, I have confidence in this, that when we go to the throne room of God boldly with our needs, with everything we have, with our shortcomings, when we go to Him and we believe on Him, it says that we're approaching, we can approach Him boldly and we will find what? His kindness. Mm -hmm. We will find His mercy. And we will find help in our time of need. Jesus sometimes, or no, Jesus always calls us to radical obedience. I had, I've had a blessing of having many conversations in the last seven days with people in, this, in, in the church body. And, and, and every time, I, you know, I, I found out, and this isn't something new for me, and this week I, I, I've been receiving some um, possessions from mom and dad's house that have been in their basement for a while. And one of the things that I, I found in there, I went through my box and I was looking and I found this letter that I wrote as a, a, my senior year of high school, 17 year old me. And, and it, was a, it was a letter to, my, to the future me, to me, today. And so I read the letter. And even then as a 17 year old high school student, I was just like nailing it. I was, <laughs> I was like, Andrew, if you ain't living up 
to what God's called you to do, you need to get right with Him. That was, that was telling me. So I know, I, me speaking boldly like this today, is, is, I guess it's not something new. I, I, read that, I read that letter yesterday, I was like, man, I was, that was just as like straightforward then. Jesus calls us to do radically obedient things. We're going to get ready as a church to go into a series on the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus' radical teaching. Flipped upside down, not how I think kind of teaching. Jesus, on a regular basis, calls us to radical obedience in Him, to do things His way rather than our way. How uh, many times I come to these teachings, and even I myself, and like I said, over these last seven days, I've had multiple different conversations with different people, and it comes down to what Jesus wants us to do, or what I would prefer to do, or what I would tend to do. And sometimes I look at what Jesus asks me to do, and I think to myself, that's impossible. I've heard that from multiple people this week. That's impossible. So on one side of this, we're going to be a church that believes God to do the impossible, to make the impossible possible. I believe it does have to do with the miracles, the signs and wonders, the amazing good things and big things of God coming through in our life. But the second thing that I'm believing for, that we're going to be a people of prayer, we're going to be a people dependent on God for ourselves. Because there is, there is an impossible calling. There is a radical obedience that Jesus calls us to. That is what? To pick up our cross daily on a regular basis and die to self. And I don't know about you, but I still struggle with that. But if we're going to be people who see the impossible possible, I also believe in that for our everyday, regular living. Yeah. Why? Because... We have a God in heaven. We have Jesus. We have somebody on our side in heaven who has faced everything that we have faced. He has faced every weakness. He has faced every temptation. He has faced every shortcoming. He has done it all. He has faced rejection. He has faced failure. He has faced the, the end of all things. He has done it all, and he has done it faithfully to God. And he invites us as his people, as his son and his daughters, as the ones he purchased. He invites us to come boldly to his throne. And he says, there at his throne, we're going to find what we need. We're going to find our help. We're going to find what we need to make the impossible calling of God to die to ourselves possible. We're going to get that help. <coughs> we're going to get it. We choose to put our faith in Him. Go to Him. Do it His way. We will find help to make the impossible possible. We're going to go through the Sermon on the Mount, talk about loving our enemy, talk about giving ourselves away, talk about forgiving others, dying to self daily. We're going to go through all these things. And because we have a uh, Father in heaven, because Jesus had uh, done all these things and faced all these things, we can go to and we will receive help. And the impossible things that he's calling us to, the things right now that you say, that's still hard for me to do, Andrew. He's going to be possible. He's going to help us. He's going to strengthen us. And as a church, not only are we going to see the magnificent miracles of God happening, we're going to see lives that are going to be radically transformed to look more and more like Him as we continue to believe the impossible is possible when we put our faith in Him, when we go to Him for our every need. Mm -hmm. As a church, we are choosing to believe the impossible is possible. That includes the extraordinary feats. That includes, man, paying off this building. That includes, man, seeing this neighborhood transformed. That includes seeing people raised from the dead and delivered and healed and set free. And that also, and that also includes our daily walking with Jesus. Our daily walking it out. This impossible feat to look like Jesus. He said, be perfect as I ever. Man, it's, a, it's impossible. It says, Jesus, with me, with me, with me, all things are possible. In me, you have what it takes. In me, you have the help. You have it all. We're going to pray that the 
one who is able to do exceedingly above and beyond anything we can ask or imagine. And we're going to lean into faith into our daily walk with Jesus <coughs> to see these impossible things happen. Together, not alone, on our own. And then it encourages just to you, you take this word and go live it on your own. No, this is the creed for us together. That together we will see the impossible, impossible. Amen. This morning, I don't know where you're going to have, but I, I want to respond to the message this morning. I want to respond and say, yes, God, I'm choosing to believe. Yes, God, I want to choose to believe for the impossible thing that I'm facing. Yes, God, I want to choose to believe that I want to be able to be obedient to you. And I want to walk this out. I want to experience all that you have for me. I want to receive the help that I need. I want to choose today to believe that the impossible is possible. If that's you this morning, you say, yeah, Andrew, I, I needed this encouragement. Uh, today, I needed to be reminded that the impossible is possible. I want to invite you to stand with me right now. But yes, I, I believe, I need to be reminded, I believe the impossible is possible. In this room, man, there's represented so many different ways that this is needed. There's represented so many different ways in which you're just saying, yeah, I, I need this. I would say this boldly today. Jesus has all that we need to make these things possible. This morning I would like to pray and, and I want to invite you to respond. We're going to respond for about five, six minutes to say, all right, God, I, I want to receive all that you have for me. I want to receive, I want to put my faith in you. And even maybe coming forth in prayer is a, just a sign to God this morning. God, I'm choosing this morning to put my faith in and what you have for me, who you are, and what you've done. Guys, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the stories of God coming through. God showing up. God helping us in our radical obedience. God bringing deliverance to these crazy things that are happening in our lives. Let's pray this morning. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the revelation of who you are and what you've done. And God, this morning, as your children, as your people, Father, we choose to have faith. We choose to believe in who you are and what you've done. And God, we choose to be a people of prayer, to confess our needs to you, to, to tell you that we need you, to, to invite you into our lives, into our spaces, into our homes, into our situations, and our relationships. God, we choose to pray to you, to lean into you. And God, I know, Father, I pray that your people would know, God, that you are about the business of doing the impossible. So, Father, as we respond today in faith, God, I pray that you would meet us at our, at our point of need. Father, and we would find mercy. We would find grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's see you this morning. You need to respond. You need to uh, take some steps of faith and say, yes, God, I, I need you in my life. I, I need you in my situation. As an act of faith, I want to invite you to come. We're going to pray together.